Good morning. This is Pastor Kerry Rogers here to give you your morning manna. God is good all the time. And I'm excited to be on the air with you today again to share God's word, to share God's truth. Amen and amen. I hope you're excited too. So go ahead and get your Bibles, study with us today, and you're going to be tremendously blessed. Well, let's begin with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see a brand new morning. And we ask you, Lord, to be with us as we study your word. We ask you to give us understanding and clarity of your word. May your Holy Spirit lead us to all truth. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, today's study is a continuation, or I should say the conclusion of yesterday's study. Are you spending God's talents? This is part two. So we're going to start from where we left off yesterday and go ahead, join us. Let's go. Let's study. You want to study? Let's study. What does talent represent spiritually for remnant people of God? Remember, we are talking about the parable of the talents. Now let's go right into it. What does talent represent spiritually for the remnant people of God? The gifts, abilities, money, time, experience, and influence are talents that are given to us by God for all who believe in Jesus Christ. These precious talents are these precious talents are given to be spent for the kingdom of God in exchange for spending the talent that God gives you for his purpose are souls for the kingdom of God. These souls are much greater value than the talent that you spent. I'm coming from Christ's Object Lessons, page 328, paragraph 2, by Ellen White. The special gifts of the Spirit are not the only talents represented in the parable. It includes all gifts and endowments, whether original or acquired, natural or spiritual, all are to be employed in Christ's service. In becoming his disciples, we surrender ourselves to him with all we are and have. These gifts he returns to us purified and ennobled to be used for his glory in blessing our fellow men. I like that. In the parable, what was the distribution of the talents? Let's look at it. Matthew 25, 15, and unto one he gave five talents, unto another two, and to another one. One, and every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. It's very personal. Notice that all was given at least one talent. We all are given talents to be spent for the kingdom of God. Everyone has a personal work to do for the kingdom of God. What did the first two do with all the talents that were given to them? Let's go ahead and look at Matthew 25, 16 and 17. Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained other two. So we find here they spent all of them in exchange for something of equal or greater value. In other words, they put them to work. They spent, sold, and gain more talents than what was originally given to them. Now, let's understand the till, seed, sow, weed, and harvest principle. See, they in implemented, I'm talking about the one with the five and the two talents. They implemented the till, seed, weed, and harvest principle in order to gain double amount of talents in which they originally gained were given. For example, they could have taken all their talents to buy tools and seeds. They tilled and prepared the soil, sold the seeds, weeded, and had an abundant harvest. They sold the produce from the harvest and was able to receive twice as much talents of money that was originally given to them. 
Spiritually, what does the seed represent? Well, in Luke 8, 11, based on that parable, the seed is the word of God. And what is the key lesson that Jesus is teaching in the parable of the talents? This is a lesson. Don't miss it. Use all the talents that God has given you to spend, work, and sow the word of God in the hearts and minds of people for the glory of God. There will be a harvest, but you have to be intentional, my friend. You have to make an effort and strive continually to use all your talents for the glory of God. You must use your talents to implant the word of God in your heart in order to sow it in others. I'm looking at Christ's Object Lessons, page 353. Talents used are talents multiplied. Did you get that or did you miss it, my friend? That is so powerful. Talents used are talents multiplied. Success is not the result of chance or destiny. It is the outworking of God's providence, the reward of faith and desecration of virtue and persevering effort. The Lord desires us to use every gift we have And if we do this, we shall have greater gifts to use. He does not supernaturally endow us with the qualifications if we lack. But while we use that which we have, he will work with us to increase and strengthen every faculty by every wholehearted, earnest sacrifice for the master's service our powers will be increased. Again, that's taken from Christ's Object Lessons, page 353. In other words, God said, if you don't use it, you lose it. But if you use it, God will increase what he gives you. Take the little you have and use it. God will multiply it. Amen. If you go, continue, if you work in the realm of faith. Now, let's continue on. When you sow God's word of truth in the mind of others, it will not return void. Isaiah 55, 11 says this, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things thereto I sent it. See, remember your, your talent is useless unless it's spent or given in exchange for something of equal or greater value in order to sow seeds of the gospel. Remember, your talent is not the seed. Its only value comes when it is exchanged for seed. You must spend your talent in heaven's approved store, and that is a kingdom of God in order to receive seeds of truth to produce a, to produce a harvest for the kingdom of of God. Remember the law of sowing and reaping. The more you sow, the more and greater the harvest for the kingdom and glory of God. Your talent is not the seed. Let me repeat that. Your talent is not the seed. Its only value comes when it is exchanged for seed, the word, and sold. This exchange for the seed and the word. When the man in the parable returned from his long journey, what did he tell the two who doubled what they originally received? He says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the world. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I'm looking at Christ's object lessons concerning this, page 361. They will enter into the joy of the Lord as they see in the kingdom of, as they see in his kingdom, those who have been redeemed through their instrumentality. And they are privileged to participate in his work there because they have gained a fitness for it by participation in his work here. 
what will what what we shall be in heaven is a reflection of what we are now in character in holy service. Again, that's taken from Christ's Object Lessons, page 361. What did the one with one talent do with it? He buried it in the earth. What was the return of burying the talent under the earth? Nothing. What is the lesson that we need to learn from this? Remember, your talent has no value unless it's exchanged for seed that can be that can reap a harvest and increase your talents. So think about it. Can I bury a dollar and expect it to grow tomatoes? No, I cannot. I have to take the dollar and buy some tomato seeds. And what does burying a talent in the earth represent? Using the talent that belongs to God on earth per- Using the talent that belongs to God on earthly pursuits, worldliness, Hollywood, Netflix, greed, and covetousness is, bear, is, bear, is like burying your talent in the earth. It's like burying your talent in the earth. Now listen now. When you bury your talents in earthly things, pursuits, there is no return. It will always come, it will always come back with empty results. What happened to the one talent? that the man buried. He lost it and gave it to the one who doubled his five talents and made it 10. If you do not use, if you, if you do not exchange your talent in the storehouse of heaven, you will lose it. Did you catch that? If you do not use, if you do not exchange your talent in the storehouse of heaven, you will lose it. Don't expect to spend your talent in the store of worldliness, earthly pursuits in Hollywood. It will come back with empty results. Not only will your talent not be doubled, but it will be, but it will be taken from you. But it will be taken from you. The one it will be, but it will be taken from you. God does not approve of unspent talent. <laughs> oh, my friend, we need to look at that again. God does not approve of unspent talent. All must be used and spent for the glory of God for the spreading of the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. What was the man's excuse for bearing the one talent? That man was a hard man that reaped where he did not sow, etc. That was his excuse. He felt that. What was the reason for his excuse? What we find here, he did not receive the Holy Spirit. He was only a professor of the truth. He was like being around the truth, but not didn't, but did not live the truth. Remember, it is the power of the Holy Spirit that gives you the power to spend your talent for the glory of God. What he could at least done with one talent. Let's look at it again. Matthew 25, 27. Thou ost therefore to have put my money to exchangers, and then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. In other words, the person with the one talent could have at least given his talent to someone else who would have at least bought some seed to grow a harvest. He could have at least gotten some money, that's interest, from that, even though it would not have been doubled. In the end, what happened to the person who buried his talent in the earth? Matthew twenty five thirty, cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Looking at Christ's Object Lessons, page 365. Many who excuse themselves from Christian effort plead their inability for the work. But did God make them so incapable? No, never. This inability has been produced in their own inactivity 
and perpetuated by their deliberate choice already in their own characters. They are realizing the result of the sentence. Take the talent from him. The continual misuse of their talents will effectually quench for them the Holy Spirit, which is the only light. The sentence, cast ye the unprofitable servant into utter darkness, sets heaven's seal to the choice which they themselves have made for eternity. And holds how sad that is. See, again, my friend, as we have learned from the word of God, God has given each person at least one talent. But when you analyze this text and look at it deeply, the parable of the talents, one given five, one given two, one given one, it is apparent that the one that was given five had already proved himself and showed himself thorough in what he'd done and faithful in what he has done And he was able to double what he had, the same with the one with the two. Now, the appeal is this. God reveals in the parable of the talent that it is our personal work and that we all must be involved in it. It is not just about giving money to a ministry or a church, but it's also being personally involved in winning souls for Jesus Christ. Let let me say that again. It is not just about giving money to a ministry or a church, but also being personally involved in the winning souls for Jesus Christ. We all must exchange our talents for seed of the gospel to sow to all the world. Expand your knowledge, my friend, in various subjects such as science, biology, history, prophecy, teaching, preaching, vocations, and gardening. From knowledge and experience gained, God will direct and expand your ministry. Coming from Christ's Object Lessons, page 362, unto whosoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Luke 12, 48. We shall individually be held responsible for doing one jot less than we have ability to do. The Lord measures our exactness every possibility for service. The unused capabilities are as much brought into account as are those that are improved. For all that might become through the right use of our talents, God holds us responsible. We shall be judged according to what we ought to have done. That's deep, but did not accomplish because we do not use our powers to glorify God. There are literally millions of buried unused talents in the grave. So God is telling you today, spend your talents for him that he has given you now while you're still living. Every talent spent is perfecting your character for the glory of God. So what's your choice, my friend? Because remember again, there are no inactive members in the true church of God. That's part of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you for the study that we've had last two days. Are you spending God's talents? And Lord, the talents that you've given us, may we use it to the glory of God. And as you, we use the talents that you've given us for the glory of God may expand and multiply our talents. Use more for the kingdom of God. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, my friend, we're going to leave it right there today. Make sure you join us again tomorrow on the same great and blessed station. God bless you. And Maranatha. For those who are interested in the medical missionary work, go to bcmeonline.org. That's bcmeonline.org. God bless you.